So about last week, we hit 45,000 subscribers on the channels. So I think it's time for a little bit of a channel update, maybe a little bit of Q&A, let you guys know what's going on with the channel and what to expect in the future. First of all, huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed. Um, subscribers took a pretty big jump recently this summer, so really great to see that. Uh, really gives me a lot of encouragement. Again, I never expected the channel to get anywhere near this many subscribers. I still don't know why there's so many of you guys subscribing to the channel when there's so many other amazing channels out there. So thank you for sticking around. If for some reason you're new and you haven't seen any of my other videos, uh, my name's Dave, I live in Japan, and I do a channel about budget watch collecting. Overall, I still feel like I'm something of a novice when it comes to watch collecting. I've been at this for about three years now. I stay exclusively in the affordable segment of the market, so I have no knowledge or experience uh, with even mid-level watches from brands like Oris. I, you know, my um, comfort zone is down around Seiko and Orient and I guess for that reason, Japan's a great place to be living. And I don't have any plans of changing that. I did recently purchase the most expensive watch that I've ever bought. It was a Yema Navigraph GMT that I was able to get at a discount from Yema. So I think I wound up paying around $700 for that. So in the three years, yeah, I've purchased a little bit more expensive watches, but still, I think most of the watches I have would be considered in the affordable segment by a lot of collectors. But I understand that I have viewers from other parts of the world where you know $700 would be like a luxury watch. So maybe for you guys, this is your luxury watch channel. Um, I don't know. Anyways, I'm just glad that uh, for all of you guys who have been for following and subscribing and commenting, gotten to know a lot of you guys in the comments and in you know, all sorts of different things. So it's been a lot of fun. One big sort of life update. Uh, my wife's about to have a baby. So I've got my fourth child on the way, baby girl, so really excited about that, but that is probably gonna have some impact on my schedule over the next few months. So if things get a bit sporadic, that's probably what happened. This is my cat, Rocky. He still only has one eye, but he's gotten a lot bigger than maybe last time he's been on the channel. So with that out of the way, let's do some Q&A. <laughs> Maybe like three or four months ago when I hit 35,000, I posted a thing saying I was gonna do a Q&A that I never did. So the 35,000 Q&A questions that you guys submitted, I'm gonna try and bust through as many as I can right now. The first one, Honest Watch Reviews asks, how long it takes me to create a video? It really depends on a lot of factors. It depends on how much B-roll I do. It depends on the watch. Uh, so yeah, I would say anywhere from about six hours to 20. So I do put a pretty significant amount of time into this, especially since this is a hobby. I have a full-time job. It's great that this earns me some income, especially since I have a new baby coming that's been <laughs> amazing for that because babies are expensive. Next up we have Jay and after saying a lot of nice things, he asks, I saw that you have a few tool watches and GMTs in your collection. So my question is, what are your hobbies and what are your favorite places to travel to? Um, yeah, so hobbies, making YouTube videos and collecting watches has kind of become the dominant hobby. Other than that, recently, I've kind of gotten into Dungeons and Dragons a little bit. Uh, pen and paper playing over Zoom with some of my friends, so that's been fun. Uh, I used to play a lot of video games. Uh, I, I love to snowboard, but haven't had the option to do that very much lately. So yeah, I go through a lot of different hobbies, but yeah, right now, probably mostly YouTubing and watch collecting and I guess Dungeons and Dragons a little bit. As far as favorite places to travel to, uh, I, I live in Japan, so I have a lot of friends back in uh, California where I'm originally from. I love going back to California and visiting there. Uh, that's probably the most common place I do travel to. I would love to get over to Europe. I haven't been there in a long time, but yeah, when I was younger, before I got married, I traveled around a lot um, on a lot of short-term missions trips. So I think this is gonna come up later, but the reason I'm in Japan is I'm a missionary planting a church here. Uh, so I used to go yeah, on a lot of short-term missions trips to other places around the world to work with different Christian groups, helping out doing all kinds of different stuff. All right, I have 23 re. Uh, can you choose three best watch YouTube channels? That's a really tough one. I think I'm subscribed to probably over a hundred YouTube channels and I definitely like more than three of them. Um, so obviously I love a lot of the big channels out there, but let me give you three that I think deserve a few more subscribers than they already have that I really enjoy that I think are actually excellent channels. Again, I, I wish I could name a lot more, but here they are. Um, first, Shane at Relative Time. Okay, and I'm not just saying that because he's a friend of mine and I met him through this early on. Um, our channels have kind of been working together since we had a couple hundred subscribers each. Um, 
but I have always been blown away by Shane's content. Uh, he has some of the most insightful observations about watches. He catches things that I would totally miss. Uh, he knows much more about watches than I do. And he is amazing at filming and showing off the different aspects of watches. Um, hands down, one of the best watch review channels on YouTube. Um, second, Caseback Watches. Tim over at Caseback Watches. A just really interesting guy, interesting perspective. I think he's based in Germany, if I remember correctly, or he's German or something like that. If, if I got that wrong, I'm sorry, Tim. Um, but he covers not just watches, but a little bit of fashion. And he has so many interesting eclectic hobbies that sort of spill into his, uh, his watch passion and watch show. It's just such an interesting show to watch. And I really enjoy his perspective and his talent in a lot of different areas. Uh, finally, Josh over at Watch It All About. Um, I've been watching his channel, I think, since before I started my own channel. His has been one that I have always sort of looked to for inspiration and ideas. He covers a lot of the same watches in the same price range that I do. Always appreciated his perspective and his production values. So I'll leave links to those three down below. Um, I think those are three great watch channels and I think all of them have under 30,000 subscribers and they probably deserve more. All right, Krisk730 asks, why are you in Japan and how much longer will you stay there? So I kind of mentioned that in the intro. Um, I'm a missionary here in Japan. I'm planting a church. This obviously connects to some really big questions, but let me see if I can just take one step back and explain it a little bit. I am 100% convinced that what the Bible, what the Christian Bible says about life and about spirituality and all of these things is 100% true. I believe that there is a God who created this world. I believe that humanity has fallen and that we have offended that God. And yet, rather than cast us away, I believe that that God reached out with the most amazing and unimaginable act of love possible in sending his son, Jesus Christ, into this world to die for our sins and to make a way for us to come back to him. And I believe that he has given his followers this message to take to the world. And that's something that Christians have been doing for the last 2,000 years. And I feel humbled and honored and called to be a part of that work, um, to continue it by coming to another country that's not my own here in Japan, uh, to work with Japanese Christians, to help share that good news, that gospel that God loves people, that he has a way for them to be saved and to be redeemed, an entirely new and amazing life with him. And so I'm here in Japan trying to help people um, understand that. Again, working under Japanese Christians, so I'm not the top of this church plant, my boss is a, a Japanese pastor. Um, really appreciate working with him and under him and in partnership with him and honored that they invited me to be a part of this church plant that they're doing. How long will we be here? Uh, I don't have any plans to go back home to the States, but you know, the, the nature of missions work requires us to go back to report to all of the churches in the US that have sent us here. So we go back on a regular basis to visit. Um, but we're anticipating staying here, at least until retirement. Uh, my wife is Japanese, kids are half Japanese. I don't know where they're gonna wind up. I might wind up here for my whole life, who knows? But yeah, that's roughly why I'm here. Uh, Grendel62 asks, any special watches you want to pass down to your kids and why? Yeah, that's something I've been kind of really thinking about ever since I started watch collecting. Like one of the main reasons I got into watch collecting was because of that idea of having an heirloom to pass down to your kids. So I've sort of always been thinking about what watch that would be. Um, right now, probably my leading case for that is the new Yema Navy Graph uh, GMT that I just bought. It's an automatic GMT. It's French, so it's unique, even though I don't have like a huge connection to France or anything, but it's kind of a cool, um, quirky watch. And it's only 39 millimeters. So I feel like that's a case size that my kids will be able to wear regardless of how big they are. So yeah, I'm very strategic in thinking these things through. I'm on the larger side. I have a seven and a half inch wrist. My kids have smaller wrists. I don't want to be passing down a huge watch that they're not going to want to wear. So 39 millimeters seems like a great size. I just hope it lasts that long. Next up, Aviv from My Affordable Watch Collection. He asks, if you could keep only one watch from your current collection, which watch would it be? And would you trade that watch for your ultimate grail watch? Um, yeah, I would probably keep my Hamilton Jazzmaster GMT. Uh, I love the way it looks. It's Swiss made. It's got good build quality. Uh, it meets all the specifications I could want out of a watch and I could wear that one watch I think forever and be good So that would probably be the one that I would keep would I trade it for my ultimate grail? 
Absolutely. I just have no idea what my ultimate grail is. All right, Gregory Barry asks, uh, was there ever a watch you may have wanted and you came across it, either bought it or got hands on with it and felt so disappointed with either the quality, the movement, etc. watch that was a real letdown? Um, interesting on that one. Yes, but then it turned the other way and now I still have the watch and I love it. Um, one of my earliest kind of grail sort of watches uh, was a Laco Casablanca. Actually, it was, I think, the Valencia is the one I really liked. It's one of their uh, entry-level uh, deck watches, so Navy-themed watches. Absolutely loved the design and the look of it, very unique. Um, it had a fully loomed dial. I thought that was super cool, too. Uh, but it has the older Miyota 8215 movement, I think, or 821A, maybe. Anyways, an older Miyota movement. Did not have hacking with that watch. Kind of noisy, cheaper movement. And I was really disappointed with that aspect of the watch after I got it. Kind of regretted buying it. Stuck with it though, and it the, just the, everything else about the watch I absolutely loved and it really grew on me. Now I don't really care about the lower end movement on it. Uh, it's still one of my favorite watches in my collection, so it kind of came back around. And thankfully on uh, Laco's newer watches, they still feature the Miyota movements, uh, but they're slightly updated Miyota movements that do have hacking now, so they kind of remedy that issue a little bit. Carbel asks, have your thoughts changed since the review of the Hamilton Khaki King? Would you go further this way, getting other Hamiltons? Are you planning on reviewing German-made budget watches? I've noticed that there are a few like Junkers, Junkers, or Zeppelin, etc. Um, my thoughts did not change to the Khaki King. I wound up selling it, uh, but I did buy another Hamilton. I bought the Hamilton Jazzmaster, which I still haven't gotten around to reviewing, uh, but I like that one much better than the Khaki King, and I would Probably there's a couple other Hamiltons I'm interested in checking out at some point, so I want to get there. I'm really interested in Junkers and uh, Zeppelin. Uh, I haven't gotten my hands on any of them yet, but at some point I definitely want to get them in on the channel. Uh, Elmo Elms asks, what is your opinion on Chinese watches? Would you say there is a, their quality is catching up with the more established brands, Japanese and Swiss? Um, yes and no. Uh, so from the Chinese watches that I've seen, I would say their strong point is definitely value. They give you an unbelievable amount of watch for the money that you pay. But I think there is still a gap in quality and design between Chinese watches and Japanese watches in general. Most of the Chinese watches that I've explored, again, primarily in the budget price range, uh, tend to be very heavy on the homage uh, territory. They really don't do a lot of original design work themselves. There, there are obviously exceptions out there, but that seems to be the general trend. Most of them are they're taking existing designs. They're uh, putting together a decent watch for an amazing price with sapphire crystals and automatic movements and then pushing them out at a much lower price than you would get from Japanese or Swiss watches. Um, but yeah, but I think that the, from what I've handled, for the most part, the quality of Japanese watches and Swiss watches and the original design and the quality of the design is better in those than in the Chinese watches, but the Chinese watches are definitely offering a better value than these other brands. That's just my take. Uh, Tan2 says, since you live in Japan, can you let me know which Japanese watch brands are popular here? Casio is very popular. I probably see more people wearing Casios than anything else. Largely the really cheap Casios, but yeah, I've seen some of their edifice lines out here. Uh, but definitely Casio is the one that I see in real life the most often. I see a lot of Seiko as well. Um, and, you know, in Tokyo and stuff, I see a lot of people wearing Rolexes and kind of higher-end Swiss watches. Uh, yeah, so I think for, actually for luxury watches, I feel like most Japanese prefer Swiss brands. Uh, but for affordable watches, most of them prefer Casio. All right, my memory card is full. My battery light is blinking. Sorry, guys, I'm going to have to cut this one short. Maybe I can get to part two and answer more questions later. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for letting me get to 45,000 subscribers. And if you don't hear from me in a couple weeks or something, it's because my wife had a baby and I'm holding the baby instead of making YouTube videos. We'll see you later, guys. Bye.